Okay, good morning everyone. Today is Friday. It is a beautiful day out here in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Uh, today we're running the 50 cal range, or rather I'm gonna be the PSG alongside my OIC platoon leader uh, for my garrison eval, um, or at least one of them. And we're gonna be doing the Mark 19, 249, and M2 uh, 50 cal range today, or ranges. Now, there's a lot of things that go into the planning process for it that uh, OIC and NCOIC have to go through uh, before we actually you know, execute, uh, which is today. And so I'm gonna go over some of those things because the plan has obviously changed due to the weather and the road conditions uh, for Fort Leonard Wood. And so, especially on some of the ranges, they've changed the road conditions so that we're not authorized to drive Humvees today, which is why I'm in my POV right now. So I wanna quickly walk through some of those items that are key steps in the planning process to actually run a range. Uh, this is, you know, TRADOC, obviously it's not real world, but yeah, obviously it's real world, but uh, in a training environment. And so these are, you know, by the book standard that, you know, we're taught to execute as steps in the plan, planning process. So the first thing is going to be doing your recon, right? So you have this tentative, tentative plan and whatnot, um, but you're given the, objective, which is to do familiarization fire on these three weapon systems at such a date, right? And so we go and recon the sites, which are the two ranges uh, that we went to recon, myself and the PL, uh, for this specific uh, garrison eval, garrison leadership eval. Now the, the ranges, uh, when you get to the ranges, uh, it's a great idea to actually take some photos of it. So when you do your briefing, whether it's the convoy brief or the actual con op brief, uh, to you know, give that to the people uh, in your platoon, uh, your different squad leaders, so they're tracking on exactly what it'll look like when they actually get there. So pictures, videos, great idea, so they can uh, actually visualize that. Now, due to time constraints, or if you have time constraints, doing an aerial recon is obviously a good idea, but you can actually supplement your physical recon by having that uh, with an overlay, like a map overlay with the terrain and what the actual you know, locations look like on the map from the top side view. <clears throat> so after you've conducted your recon, the next big consideration is your deliberate risk management. Uh, that's specifically a form that you need to fill out, but you know, the considerations for that are just making sure your people uh, have the right equipment, that are prepared for whatever hazards they might see on the range, movement at and around the range, and actually getting to it. Uh, those are things that you have put on the form, but also just considerations that you need to make sure that you're accounting for so that you're mitigating risk and accounting for things that you might expect to see day of actually doing your familiarization fire. Next big step before you actually get into the briefing and making sure that things are good to go, you know, a week before, this should be like, you know, two weeks prior, you should be sending up your supply request. This is pretty huge because you could be actually requesting the weapon systems, whether you have mounts for them, uh, the home V's, uh, whether they have optics, uh, all that stuff. And that also includes, you know, things that you might have in the range box, uh, CLP for these, you're gonna need LSAT uh, because the crew serve weapons operate a little bit differently and need different types of lubricants. So these are considerations that you have to put in your supply request to your S4 and uh, well, whoever is going to be in charge of making sure that supply gets there uh, well before the range and the ammunition is ordered uh, through whoever your ammo OIC might be. So now you've done kind of the three, you know, administrative items that are key tasks that you need to accomplish and fill out forms for before you actually, you know, do your briefing. Now, to do your briefing, you need to come up with a CONOP, a concept of operations. This is key for any, you know, mission that you're doing, but especially for a range, a CONOP is going to provide people with a general idea what your plan is and how you're going to execute and what different leadership roles that are subordinate leaders to you are going to be doing during that exercise. So I'll show the con up here that we put together briefly. And essentially it's going to have the who, what, where, and why of you know what we're trying to accomplish, how we're going to do it, the time, the date, and exactly the kind of concept of operations for the movement and maneuver, um, so to speak, of when you're actually there and how the different pieces are going to look during the timeline. It's important to take a good moment to actually brief your detailed timeline of how things are going to look uh, when you're there. Uh, but again, these are things that you're going to consider before you actually 
uh, do your con up so that when you're actually briefing, you're going to be squared away and make sure that you're able to answer all the questions that your squad leaders might have, TLs or just the Joes, about what your plan actually is. So people are now leaving to go to the range by POV, and so as PSG, I need to get my ass over there and make sure that things are moving according to plan. Now obviously I didn't cover every single factor you need to consider when you're running a range. These are just some of the big ticket items that I would expect you to see when you're running most types of ranges. Again, there's many MET TC factors, including the type of weapon system, the weather, the specific range, you know, the conditions at that range and the range cadre, stuff like that, and their specific requirements. But again, these are some of the key steps that I put in my planning process that generally you will see uh, when running a range. It's gonna be a cold one today. So I'm gonna to have to narrate the rest of the clips here uh, offline after the range, because obviously it is now like 9 p.m. We are done cleaning weapons, but I'm gonna talk through the rest of the clips here because I cannot be out here vlogging and having my camera on talking when I'm trying to run a range as the platoons are. So here we're actually getting the ammo delivered to the range. Next, we're just getting the range hot, making sure weapon systems are set up, the mounts are good to go. Next, we finally have the range hot and the weapon systems are good to go. I'm now gonna shut up and let you hear some freedom ring. Finally, we have the fun part at the end of the day. Once the range is now cold, we go back and clean weapons. So that's pretty much it. That was the planning process and then the execution of actually running the range. Hopefully this was helpful for some of you guys out there that I guess haven't ran a range yet or want to see a different perspective on running a US weapon systems range. Uh, obviously, you know, as an LT, what do I know, right? But hopefully this helps someone out there. And if that is done, then I've achieved my goal. So please give this video a like if you like this video or if you want to see more content uh, on similar things like this. Um, or anything else, please leave a comment down below and give it a like, subscribe, you know, do all those good things. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys right now. Until next time, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.